when I woke up this morning, I didn't realize that live science was going to choose violence. Um, I have mentioned this before, and I have not read this article, so I have no idea what it's going to say. But just by reading the headline, I can already kind of guess. Live science, long-held myth, says Hurricane Andrew sparked Florida's Burmese python problem. Is it true? Published one day ago by Ethan Friedman. In 1992, uh, uh, the 1992 storm destroyed a python breeding facility, potentially setting hundreds of pythons free, but it's likely the invasive species had gained a foothold in the Everglades long before the hurricane hit. On August 4th, hunters in South Florida will begin to cull a, a cull of Burmese pythons as part of an annual competition to try and keep the invasive snake's population in check. Burmese pythons are native to Southeast Asia, where they slink through thick jungles, grasslands, and swamps. But these snakes, which can grow to be more than 18 feet long, have also established an invasive population in Southern Florida that has decimated local ecosystems, the snakes devouring prey as large as deer and alligator. Researchers aren't sure exactly how the animals came to foothold in the state. Well, one theory is that the invasive snakes got their start in 1992 when Hurricane Andrew destroyed a reptile breeding facility near Miami, setting Burmese pythons loose across the Sunshine State. But many experts say this is likely an oversimplification of the python's origin story. In 1992, Andrew slammed into the Miami area as a Category 5, quickly becoming one of the most destructive hurricanes in American history. More than 15 feet of storm surge flooded the coast and over 10 inches of rain dropped in some areas. Wind gusts were about 167 miles per hour. According to the New Yorker, a warehouse filled with reptiles in Homestead, Florida, just south of Miami, was destroyed during the storm and one official told the magazine that he remembered seeing hundreds of Burmese pythons in the warehouse. When the storm destroyed the building, those uh, pythons could have gotten loose in the swampy environs of southeast Florida. Many wild animals did get loose during Andrew's landfall, and some newspapers reported sightings of large snakes in the storm's aftermath. But individual Burmese pythons have reported reportedly been spotted in the Everglades since at least 1979, with unconfirmed reports throughout the 80s, according to the 2023 report. And that is true. So, before I go any farther, the claim was never that the first Burmese pythons got out because of Andrew. I've said this before in a few videos in the past. The first one was spotted right outside of Everglades Holiday Park in 1979. There's a big difference between established and just an individual animal out. There, are, there have been individual king cobras. There have been individual reticulated pythons. There have been individual of a bunch of other stuff. But once you get established in our breeding, that is a difference. And the argument that we make, or at least that most of the people that I talk to make, is that Sure, there might have been a couple of escaped pets, and because the Burmese does so well in Florida compared to other snakes, that yes, there are there were some from the pet trade that escaped. But there was not an established breeding population. Now, when at one time, hundreds of Burmese pythons are released because of a storm, which it was a skinning facility. It wasn't like breeding them for pet trade. It was like it was breeding them so that they could sell their hides to make like boots and wallets and stuff. When hundreds get out at one time, now all of a sudden your chances of a breeding population exponentially exploding increase. Like, is it really that hard to think that that happened? Like, seriously. The snakes were not commonly sighted in South, uh, southern Florida until at least 1995. While that's three years after, Andrew, the timing and geography of the python invasion don't fit with the storm theory science. What the f- What? Andrew happened in 1992. Right? You, 
that's what it says here, 1992. That's when <coughs> these pythons got out. So because three years go by where people weren't seeing them all over the place, don't you think that, like, yeah, it takes a couple of breeding seasons. If they establish themselves, it only takes, like, one or two seasons for hundreds of pythons to turn into multiple hundreds of pythons. Are you... F what? Are you listening to yourself right now? Three years passed before they became a common sight. Therefore, the hundreds of pythons that were released into the area don't really seem to coincide with this theory. Conspiracy! What? what? 1995 to 2000, 11 pythons were sighted or captured in the southwestern part of the Everglades National Park. Miles away from the destroyed reptile facility at Homestead. When the population started to grow initially in the 90s, most of it was 20 miles away from that facility. Dan Simberloff, an economist at the University of Tennessee, told Live Science. It wasn't until the turn of the millennia, the millennium, that the snakes routinely showed up in the Miami area near where the warehouse once stood. Based on the geography and population growth rates, 2011 study concluded that the simplest explanation for the Burmese python invasion is that a few individual snakes were released into the south southern Everglades sometime before 1985, population growing slowly until 1990s before skyrocketing upwards. <coughs> Man. <clears throat> I'm still getting over a little bit of a cold. The 2023 report noted that a second separate introduction of Burmese pythons may have occurred in southwest Na uh, Florida closer to Naples. While some believe Hurricane Andrew in 1992 caused the Burmese python problem, um, Burmese pythons have been detected here prior, in, here prior to the hurricane as early as 1979. Several introduction events likely occurred in South Florida. A spokesperson for the FWC, well, live side, screw FWC. I take that back. I'm just, of course, they're going to say that. This doesn't necessarily mean that Hurricane Andrew didn't contribute to the snake spread, however. It's possible that some snakes escaped from the pet trade during the storm and joined the feral population, experts said. If it is, if it was multiple choice questions as to how the Burmese python got into the South, the South Florida ecosystem, it was A, escaped pet force. B, was intentionally released, and C, meteorological disturbance. I would circle D for all the above. Yeah, so you're not, it's not a conspiracy then. Um, an environmental scientist with the Conservancy of Southwest Florida told Live Science. Simberloff said that over the past two decades, research has shown that many invasive species that were thought to be a result of a single introduction were actually introduced to their habitat in multiple ways. This includes the brown and knoll, another reptile invasive in Florida. Oh, wow, they actually used that one as an example. About 17,000 pythons were imported to the United States between 1970 and 1995 for the pet trade. And with that many pythons coming in, it's entirely possible that a few will be released by their owners. People will get tired of having a huge snake, Simberloff said. Bartosek who kept Burmese pythons as pets growing up in Florida, also noted that snakes are escape artists, and it's possible uh, that some pet snakes could have snuck out of homes and into the warm, prey-filled habitat of south southern Florida. It is now mostly illegal to keep the species as a pet in the state. The population of wild Burmese pythons in Florida is unknown, but estimates suggest that it could be hundreds of thousands out there. Last year's python challenge saw 231 snakes were removed from the Everglades, and while initiatives like this are helpful in controlling the population, eradicating it is currently out of the question. Eradication of the entire population across the landscape is not possible with any existing tools, whether applied singularly or in combination. It is possible. Let anyone have a bounty on them. Train them first, but like, hey, don't just wait for the one single python roundup. Let people go out there all year long, be able to catch them live, bring them to a checkpoint, make sure their containment is fine, ship them out of state right then and there. Hey, 
you could ship them out right here, but sell them out of state or something. Or kill them for a price. If you let anyone who has the ability to do so go out and do this, <laughs> they will make it their full-time gig. Do it. But that would be a problem to the people who are doing it for their full-time gig too. Because then they have competition. But guess what? It's not about the competition. It's not about making a paycheck. It's about getting rid of the Burmese pythons, right? If you make it cost, like if you give people the incentive to make money doing this, the snakes would be wiped out in a matter of years. However, how many species do we have that are just on the brink of extinction because people have hunted them? Like it's as simple as saying, like the FWC makes it so hard to actually go out there and take care of the problem. But then they want to put articles like this on our face. And I know FWC did this in our face. But they want to make articles like this. Probably in conjunction with FWC be like, Hey, there's this rumor going around that hundreds of snakes escaped. Which they did. But it wasn't until a couple of years later that we really started seeing them. Really? That's going to be your argument? That's going to debunk the conspiracy? No one said that that was the only reason. No one said that. They're saying that that was one of the major reasons. So to act like you're debunking something? Come on, guys. Live science. What you doing, baby? You're supposed to be like, I like your stuff. You don't know, the, like, what? what is this, live science? Conspiracy theorists. They have to only get out. And that's Bredo right there. That's Burrito McGee. One of the commissioners who was on a development board for, you know, destroying Florida. And when I say development board for destroying Florida, I mean he literally, like, he is one of the ones that are on boards of development companies who are going in and building condos and shit like that. Conflict of interest, maybe? Anyway, let me know what you think down below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. <laughs> yeah, man, hopefully this doesn't kill me. Maybe they sprinkled something in the water when I was down there in the Everglades. And I missed one when I was down there. I went herping. And um, I had a really good night. A bunch of scarlet snakes. And I'll probably post that herping video actually after this one. So that'll be my second video of the day. And um, I went to go look for... American crocodiles. The guy I was with left, and he came across a berm. So I missed one this trip again. Oh well, I've only seen them once out of the dozen times I've been down there. But they're everywhere, right? Anyway, I'll see you on the next one. Keep it wild.